Hello, everyone. I'm Flavia. I speak on behalf of the CSM Youth, and I'm part of the Society for International Development. I'm going to speak about Section 5. So regarding Section 5, we do understand that technological innovation and digitalization are important aspects of the current food system. However, we do believe that their potential benefits, but also risks, depend entirely on the context of their application. The HLP report was also very clear about it. In this sense, when we talk about digitalization, the key question that we want to ask is to which form of agriculture it is directed to. For example, digital innovation in agroecological farming requires an entirely different approach from the one currently applied in intensive or industrial agriculture. It is necessary to overcome the ongoing digital gaps so that the potential benefits of this technology can be accessible to whole youth and not only with access to a higher level of financial capital. In fact, the HLP report has highlighted that digital technology has the potential to expand knowledge democracy if and only if this digital divide is overcome. We also want to point out that young people who do not have all the means to afford this kind of innovation are often left without any protection whatsoever of their personal data and their territories when they do obtain them. We urge for an equitable use of technology that safeguard small food producers and indigenous people with their knowledge and serenity rather than big private companies. And we want this to be very clear in the draft as well. This is why adding the point on data ownership is absolutely crucial when we speak about digitalization. It is also necessary to draw attention to technology made in the territories where young people are. Youth in territories do not only obtain technology that came from big tech and big data, which dominate the global market. They tend to use the sustainable small scale technology in a way to organize local food systems. Digital technologies where data is controlled by youth and owned by youth themselves can also be an example when organizing the distribution of seasonal and locally produced vegetables. Going into specifics, and I'll finish real soon, as for point A, we welcome the mention of social innovation, but we think that it could be further strengthened by a clarification of the aim of such innovation. At CSM, we strongly believe that social innovation should be rooted in respecting ecological boundaries while working towards economies of well-being. Point A could also benefit from adding solidarity-based or community-based economies and cooperatives as, as example. Also, this point only says that indigenous and intergenerational knowledge should be taken into account. So digitalization is the framing while the indigenous knowledge comes only as secondary. We do believe that indigenous people knowledge should be further prioritized within this paragraph. Finally, Point B instead talks about extension services. We want to highlight that these conventional services might not be always adequate. This is why concepts like peasant-to-peasant -peasant training are necessary. And we do believe that it is essential to include youth-to-youth -youth training by and for youth as well. These methodologies have proven to work for more equitable food systems, but they often stay unrecognized. The policy recommendation could be really innovative in recognizing and welcoming this type of trainings as well. Thank you very much for your attention.